today we are going to discuss about the microbial diseases in the respiratory system. Our respiratory system is composed of two divisions, the upper respiratory system and the lower respiratory system. The upper respiratory system consists of the nose, the pharynx, which is the throat, and the structures associated with them, including the middle ear and the auditory tubes. Every time we breathe, we also inhale several microorganisms. Therefore, the upper respiratory system is a major portal of entry for pathogens. And also, the lower respiratory system consists of the larynx, which is the voice box, trachea, which is the windpipe, bronchial tubes, and alveoli. The alveoli are the air sacs that makes up the lung tissue. We are now going to discuss the microbial diseases of the upper respiratory system. The upper respiratory system is the site of many common infections. In this topic, we will be discussing about pharyngitis, which is the inflammation of the mucous membranes of the throat, or simply sore throat. And also the laryngitis, which affects our ability to speak. Many people tend to assume that a sore throat is caused by streptococci, 5 to 10 percent, but 30 to 60 percent are caused by viruses. Streptococcal pharyngitis is caused by group A streptococci. This gram positive bacterial group consists solely of streptococcus pyogenes. The pathogenicity of group A streptococci is enhanced by the resistance to phagocytosis. Its diagnosis is based on throat swab. Also, the rising IgM antibody is the best indicator of a sore throat. Pharyngitis is characterized by local inflammation and a fever. Lip notes becomes enlarged and tender when tonsillitis occurs. We are now going to discuss the second microbial disease, which is caused by Streptococcus pyogenes. When the Streptococcus pyogenes strain, causing the Streptococcal pyogenes produces an erythrogenic toxin, the resulting infection is called scarlet fever. When the strain produces this toxin, it has been nitrogenized by a bacterium patch. The scarlet fever has become pandemic during the year 1830, and it declines during the year 1880. The symptoms of this disease causes a pinkish red skin rash, which is probably the skin's hypersensitivity reaction to the circulating toxin and a high fever. As the disease runs its course, the affective skin frequently peel off, which is very familiar to scudded skin syndrome. The tongue has a spotted strawberry-like appearance, and then as it loses its upper membrane, it becomes very red and enlarged. The third microbial disease is diphtheria, which is caused by Corinebacterium diphtheriae. It is a gram-positive non-endospore forming grad bacteria. During 1935, it is the leading infectious killer of children in the United States. The disease begins with a sore throat and fever and swelling of the neck. Diptera has a tough grayish membrane that forms in the throat in response to the infection. Diphtheria is also expressed as cutaneous diphtheria. In this form of the disease, it infects the skin, usually at the wound or similar skin lesion, and there is minimal systemic circulation of the toxin. In cutaneous infections, the bacteria cause slow healing ulcerations covered by a gray membrane. One of the most uncomfortable complications of the common cold or any infection of the nose or throat 
is the infection of the middle ear. Otitis media. The pathogens cause the formation of pus, which builds up pressure against the eardrum and cause it to become inflamed and painful. We are now going to discuss the viral diseases in the upper respiratory system. And one of these viral diseases is the common cold virus. The symptoms of the common cold include sneezing, excessive nasal secretion, and congestion. The infection can easily spread from the throat to the sinuses and over the respiratory system and the middle ear, leading to complications of laryngitis and otitis media. Colds are caused by viruses. That's why there are no antibiotics as a means of treatment. We are now down to the second half of our discussion. The microbial diseases in the lower respiratory system. The first disease is the whooping cough, which is caused by Bordetella pertussis. Pertussis is a Greek word, per, that means star of flea, and tussis, that means cough. Bordetella pertussis is a small, obligately aerobic, gram-negative cochobacillus. The virulent strains possess a capsule. The bacteria attach specifically to ciliated cells in the trachea, first impeding their ciliary action and then progressively destroying the cells. Bordetella pertussis produces several toxins. The first one is the tracheal cytotoxin, which is responsible for damage to the ciliated cells. The second one is the pertussis toxin which enters the bloodstream and is associated with systemic symptoms of the disease. There are three stages of the whooping cough. The first one is the cataract stage, which is the initial stage of pertussis resembles a cough. There's a violence of coughing in small children that causes broken ribs. The second one is the paroxysmal stage, the accumulation of mucus in the trachea and bronchi that causes beef cups. Gasping of air between ranges of cups. The third stage is the convalescence stage that may last for months. The second disease is the tuberculosis, which is caused by mycobacterium tuberculosis. TB is the most commonly acquired by inhaling the bacillus. Only very fine particles containing one to three bacillus are inhaled to the lungs, where they are usually phagocytized. The macrophage of a healthy individual became activated by the presence of the bacillus and usually destroyed them. Large amounts of lipids in the cell wall account for the bacterium's acid fast characteristics. Mycobacterium tuberculosis may be ingested by alveolar macrophages. If not killed, the bacteria produced in the macrophages. A screening test for infection is held, which is called tuberculin skin test. The third disease that we are going to discuss are the bacterial pneumonias. The term pneumonia is applied to many pulmonary infections, most of which are caused by bacteria. Pneumonia caused by Streptococcus pneumoniae is the most common, about two-thirds of cases, and is therefore referred to as typical pneumonia. Pneumonia is caused by other microorganisms, which can include fungi, protozoa, viruses, and other bacteria are termed atypical pneumonias. Pneumonias are named after the portions of the lower respiratory tract they affect. Example, lobes of the lungs are infected. The disease is called global pneumonia. One of the examples of pneumonia is the pneumococcal pneumonia that is caused by Streptococcus pneumoniae, 
which is a gram-positive bacterium. It is also the common cause of otitis inja and meningitis. The lungs have a reddish appearance because blood vessels are dilated. Symptoms are fever, beating difficulty, chest pain, and last colored sputum. We are also discussing the viral diseases in the lower respiratory system. And one of the examples is the flu, which is caused by influenza virus. It causes fever, headache, and general muscular aches. Hemagglutoria happens. The agglutination of red blood cells that occurs when the viruses are mixed with them. Hemagglutinin and neuraminidase spikes project from the outer lipid bilayer of the virus. And spikes wherein 100 per virus differ from the H spikes in appearance and function. They help separate the infected cells as the virus exits after intracellular reproduction. And spikes also stimulate the formation of antibodies. Viral strains are identified by antigenic differences in the HA and NA spikes. They are also divided by antigenic differences in their protein code. Our last topic is the fungal diseases in the lower respiratory system. The first example is the histoplasmosis that is caused by histoplasma capsulatum, which is a dimorphic fungus, just like pathology in tissue growth. The disease is acquired by inhaling airborne conidia. The second example is the pneumonocytes pneumonia that is caused by pneumonocytes gerovesi that is found in healthy human lungs. It causes disease in immunosuppressed patients. There are five stages in this fungal disease. The first stage, the mature cyst contains eight intracystic bodies. Then the cyst ruptures releasing the bodies. Then the bodies develop troposoids. Then the troposoids divide and each troposoid develops into a mature cyst.